Hey everyone, this is Lou. Um, just uh, changing some strings on some things with strings. And uh, also changing my sheets because our cat has a few flea friends. Um, but I thought I'd just do just a quick, I don't know, rig rundown of um, just kind of the things I've accumulated over the, actually mostly just the last year. Um, and just kind of, uh, yeah, just kind of off the cuff talking which will not be a common occurrence on this channel. So, yeah, we'll just start with the uh, the um, pretty familiar ones to most of you. Um, this is a Entourage by Siegel Mini Jumbo Rustic Acoustic. Uh, this was my first acoustic um, out of maybe two that I've really ever owned. Um, I got this when I first started playing about ten years ago, and pretty much... Um, all of, everything from all of my past projects has been written on this guitar, started life here, and, um, yeah, I would highly suggest, uh, if you're in the market for an acoustic, um, Siegel makes really great budget acoustic instruments that, uh, usually have these nice satin finishes, which is nice, because I really don't like gloss finishes, which is funny, because most of my other guitars are gloss finished, um, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, getting old. <laughs> I really need to get some work done on it soon. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And then moving on to the fabled, formerly known as Mango. It's a 2015 classic player jazz master, um, with a bunch of crap all over it, really. Um, so this is a, uh, this is called a Stagerem bridge. Um, it's from a UK company, kind of to... Uh, kind of combat the mastery bridge in terms of just kind of what it does for a jazz master's intonation and sustain and setup. Um, it's a drop in for the tunematic bridge that they uh, originally came with. Um, and then uh, it's got planet waves, locking tuners with um, the built in string cutter, which is nice because I'm lazy. Um, and then the pickups are uh, Guitar Fetish brand. Um, hot wound jazz master pickups, which are getting pretty old, and I should probably change them out, but I won't <laughs> because of the setup that I have accidentally stumbled upon. Um, which, uh, not really sure what happened. <laughs> uh, I'm not very good at soldering, and so when I was working on this guitar, when I was, um, doing stuff with Jank. I uh, messed up the wiring, and so now the rhythm circuit, which is what the switching system is, um, is always on full volume. There's no volume knob, um, so this doesn't work, and uh, this is just a very dramatic tone knob, um, and it gives me this tone that's, I guess, sort of close to the in-between position and the neck pickup, but I can't really seem to get the same sound out of them. Um, so, uh, I exclusively pretty much just use this setup for this guitar. Um, don't really know how to explain it. It's just a tone that, um, I like. It's very, uh, shimmery without being too sparkly. And that's, <laughs> those are completely superfluous ways of describing that because that's just, uh, those are just adjectives. <laughs> um, but anyway, moving on to the stuff that y'all might not be super familiar with me having. Um, this is a early 2000s Ibanez Jet King, which was um, kind of a budget model based on their early 60s kind of Tesco Del Rey shapes that the that Ibanez was working with, um, but with some modern for the time uh, quality of life improvements. Um, it's got uh, two humbuckers, but also these switches that... Uh, will let you either coil split or coil tap. I'm not really sure off the top of my head which one. Um, but yeah, it's got a three-way here, and you can get, like, pretty pretty standard humbucker, you know, Les Paul kind of tones out of this as it is. A pretty, it's a pretty heavy uh, guitar, um, kind of like a Les Paul. So you can get those, you know, big, chunky tones out of the humbuckers. But then you can also kind of get the the shimmery spanky jazz master tones out of the uh the coil tapping or splitting or whatever whichever one it is um i just threw 12s on this for the first time which i've been playing lately um so uh i might be 
in the market of selling this, um, just to kind of free up some room. I'm not really trying to make too much money off of it. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And then we have the siblings, the, uh, grandma's furniture siblings. Um, this is a 19, either an early, I think a late sixties or early seventies music master bass body at the very least. Um, because, um, these bases do not come standard with a maybe DiMarzio brand humbucker. I'm still really not sure. I'm still in the process of kind of getting this worked on by my luthier. And, um, yeah, I really like this. I'm not a bass player um, by any stretch of the imagination, but I've really kind of come into um, a good feeling of just kind of getting the lay of the land when kind of just coming up with bass parts and... Um, yeah, it's a short scale, which I have fairly tiny hands, and this makes me really feel kind of like a giant. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's fun. Uh, the switches down here are basically, this does nothing. Um, <laughs> reverb buys. Um, and this is a bass boost. Um, so it's really just, you know, normal tone, normal volume. And, um, and so, yeah, I, uh, am determined to get this as serviceable as I possibly can, because I really do enjoy this bass. And then we have the sibling, which is a no-name, um, I want to say like a 60s Mustang build, um, that I also found on Reverb. I have a bad habit of finding and going after quirky guitars that look like furniture on Reverb. Um, and, uh, and yeah, this is, uh, another kind of passion project that I'm in the middle of getting, uh, getting serviceable. It's really just the tuners at this point that I need, um, switched out. Um, but, uh, it's got something called an Electrum Bridge, which, um, it's basically just kind of to keep any of the strings from sliding out of the saddles or whatever is kind of here to, uh, be saddles. This is a very strange kind of setup that I'm not used to, and it kind of is, it baffles me that the strings don't pop up sorry, pop up out of, you know, what is essentially just kind of just flat metal. <laughs> so, um, and then this, uh, the switching system is also very interesting because it's got a push-pull pot here, which, um, allows the pickups to be played, I believe the full range of, of options is, uh, bridge and neck separately, normal, um, and also together in series and in parallel, um, but also in and out of phase. So, um, it's got about six different pickup selections, which is not a standard feature on a Mustang. Uh, so I just thought that that was kind of a, a cool, quirky thing to, you know, just add to a guitar that I already really enjoy, just the visual aesthetic of, and just, again, because it's short scale, just feels really good in my hand. And, um, yeah. So this is not going to be a very, oh, I guess I might as well. So this is my amp. <laughs> it is a, the brand is called Tech 21, which you wouldn't know because the faceplate fell off recently. Um, this is a very strange amp that I'd never heard of and basically just got to um, replace my tiny Fender frontman that I've had since uh, 2007 or something in my household. Um, but yeah, it's a very pretty simple setup. Um, except for these really weird, um, settings. I, I don't, it's really the only thing I kind of understand is the clean, high gain, and hot settings. Everything else is just kind of, uh, their words. <laughs> so, um, I mostly just play it on British, um, usually on high gain, um, unless I'm playing clean. And, um, on UK, I have no idea what it is about those settings that I like. Um, this amp kind of, uh, baffles and eludes me. So, for anyone asking about what I've been using for amps lately, that is about it. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick little rig rundown of, um, kind of what I'm plucking these days. Um, this is, isn't something I'll be doing very often, really, ever. Um, I maybe get a new guitar or, you know, trade something out maybe once every six months to a year, so, um, this has kind of just been the accumulation of the last year, mostly just these three, 
Um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> this is weird, but um, I appreciate everyone for continuing to watch and support, and um, have a pleasant rest of your day.